Should you go team blue or team red? Well, there's all these options out there. But here are my top five CPUs you should buy in 2025 and 2026. Let's go. Number one CPU that I think you should buy is the Intel Core Ultra 285K. And I've probably already ruffled some feathers by saying Intel because everyone's hating Intel for some reason. If you're a creator, honestly, it's not a bad option at all. In fact, there are some real benefits for going with Intel Core Ultra 9 to 85K because it's a cheap platform compared to AMD Ryzen 9000 or even the previous generation Intel 14900K for example or Z790 690 platform. Interestingly the latest platform the Core Ultra 9 hadn't received that big of a performance increase as the previous generation and the sales are not very good which for us is really good actually but that's why the price for this is really, really low. So at the moment, I'm looking, this is outside of deal season, $449. Go check out the latest pricing in the video description below. See if you can get it even cheaper. I'm gonna leave you a few options there as well. So if you click on it, you can see different stores. That is already discounted for what it should be. Intel, that used to be more expensive than AMD and AMD used to be the underdog. A lot of things have changed. Intel is the underdog now and is a lot better option for your money. So apart from being cheap, it's also more PCI lanes than the previous 14th gen. It's very energy efficient. So they've changed all the massive power draws. It's very easy to cool now. You can easily use an air cooler, not a problem whatsoever. It's got the best memory support on the market. So if you're a creator who needs a lot of RAM, 256 gigabytes, for example, and the fastest speed possible, then the Ultra 9 285K is the best option for you. The Ryzen 9 99 50X, 9950X 3D, the memory control, the memory support is not as good as on Intel. So even if you're running AMD GPU, for example, or some other GPUs, the Intel QuickSync on this one still gives you really smooth timeline performance. But there's a but, uh, if you have a 5000 series Nvidia GPU, then the 5000 series also supports more codecs than the iGPU. But regardless, the Intel QuickSync is a solid, solid software support for video editors. And then finally, if you're a photographer for Lightroom Classic, then the Core Ultra 9 is the best CPU you can get for it. It is absolutely the top performer in my benchmarks. If you wanna check it out, the link is in the description below. Ah, uh, it's so annoying. I don't wanna pay hundreds of dollars to just change my Windows wallpaper just because my Windows isn't licensed. Well, why don't you try Hookies? That's a ton cheaper. And if you use the Core TN20, you get it even cheaper. What do you mean? How do I get it and how is it possible? Well, see this video here or the one you're watching. Click yeah. in the link on the video description, add the Windows 11 CD product to the card, proceed to checkout, add the quality in 20 for the extra discount. So what the Windows 11 Pro OEM key is just $23.22. <laughs> yeah. Choose the preferred payment option and complete the purchase. The key will be available on the purchased orders in a few moments. Copy the key and paste it into your Windows activation settings and you're all done. Oh, well, that was easy. Is that Ryan Gosling? Uh, uh, no. Anyway, by the way, the same discount code also works website-wide, so go check out uh, other products, maybe like Microsoft Office. Number two is the 9950X. And you might be saying, wait a second, you just said that Intel is the one to choose. Why are you now giving us the 9950X? Well, here's a few reasons. I'd say probably overall, the 9950X is a better CPU, better platform, better option for most people if you're not doing Lightroom Classic, for example, and not video editing if you're not relying on the iGPU. If you already have 5000 series GPU, then the 9950X could be a better CPU for video editing. In terms of overall performance, I think the 9950X has the slot. Number two reason for this CPU is upgrade support. The Ryzen platform is absolutely amazing. The AM5 socket, you actually can start it with X670 motherboards that would still be working completely fine in there. And probably another platform 
at least one will be on the same platform so you've got upgrade path which is really really nice to know there is no real world disadvantage for not having the igp or intel quick sync now on the amd ryzen because nvidia just did a favor for lisa because you know lisa and jensen they're cousins so they probably go against intel but then jensen bought some shares on intel funny business that isn't it i digress if you've got an nvidia 5000 series then you have no disadvantage on the ryzen 9000 7000 platform because that gpu supports more codec support on the timeline also if you're a 3d artist the ryzen 9950x has the best 3d performance in the mainstream platform there and if you want to run pbo or run it unlocked or push it a little bit more you can get even better performance so that is the best 3d cpu out there on the mainstream platform it's easy to cool you can also use air coolers absolutely no problem whatsoever and finally it is a lot cheaper and better value than the x3d chip the ryzen 9 x 3d so I think for most people, the 9950X makes a lot more sense unless you're a gamer. Go check out the latest pricing in the video description below. CPU number three is the 265K from Intel. So this is the Core Ultra 7. This, I think for most people, is the most important CPU from this top five because it is what I would call the best bang for buck performance out there. It is very, very affordable. Right now I can see $279, but Go check it out in the video description below because I believe when you're watching this, it's most likely cheaper because of holiday season, sales period, or just the time it's taken for me to make this publish it go out there. Most likely it's gonna be even cheaper for you. But that CPU is so close to the Intel Core Ultra. It's slightly slower, yes, but in terms of value and performance, there is nothing like this Core Ultra 7 265K. It's absolutely amazing. It scores really high on all of the benchmarks, especially Lightroom Classic. It's very, very close to the Core Ultra 9. So going from Core Ultra 7 to Core Ultra 9 is not that big of a step. It's only a step down, but the price difference is huge. And if you're looking at equivalent performance CPUs from AMD Ryzen side, you're gonna be paying a lot more. Or the AMD Ryzen performs slightly better, but it's also a lot more expensive so to have a CPU that is kind of mid-range CPU price, but performs so high in all of the charts is absolutely amazing. And you're gonna have all the benefits that you had with the Core Ultra 9 285K that I mentioned in the first CPU. You've got the PCI lanes, you've got easy to call, perhaps even easier to call, iGPU, an amazing RAM support, all of that is exactly the same on the Core Ultra 9. And if you look at the platform cost, so not just the CPU cost, then you can see that the Core Ultra first series, I guess, platform cost on the Z890 is a lot more affordable than on the Ryzen 9000 X870 and X870e platform, which means if you're looking for best bang for buck, that's the one. Even the previous generation, for some reason, is more expensive than this guy here. So it's a little bit of a unicorn in the mix. So if you're asking for best bang for buck, that is the one that people should be picking up and often it's on a deal. So go check out the latest pricing in the video description below. Let's move on to CPU number four. And this is another high-end CPU, which is the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D. And you might be saying, wait a second, didn't you just say that there's better value options for this one? Yes, absolutely. Uh, even though I don't touch gaming on this channel, I realize that there are people out there who like to do gaming as well. And in that case, this is the best of both worlds. It is very, very expensive. It is the one that is on top of the charge pretty much everywhere. So you get the same performance of 9950X within margin of error. So I can say, yes, it is slightly better in some of these, couple of percent, but it's also within margin of error. So the 9950X 3D, is the top performer there but it's also best in the game so if you're doing games then it is really really good perhaps if you're asking for the best cpu and money is not really an obstacle for you then the 9950x 3d is the one to go for it is right now 649 dollars there's quite a big jump from the x to X3D, but you really gain the gaming performance. So if you want the gaming and creative both in one, then that's that. But I'd say if your priority is creative benchmarks, then the 9950X is absolutely amazing as well. It's not bad for gaming, but it's just the X3D is so much more in there. If you're asking for a CPU that's best of everything, pretty much, and still has all the benefits of the non X3D, then the 
9950X3D is the best CPU you can get. Links in the description below if you want to check it out and my favorite motherboards. Now CPU 5, if you've been waiting on this list and thinking, wait a second, I can't afford any of these, then this is the option where you can. This one is the 14600K. It's an absolutely fantastic CPU because of the value. Right now I'm seeing it goes $179 and that is not even deals period. Go check it out in the video description below and see if you can get it even cheaper. Often there's some bundle days or something like that going on as well, but you might be saying, well, why is that any better? Now, this is previous generation of the latest Intel generation, if that makes sense. And if you remember, I said that yes, it can be a little bit more expensive in terms of the new cost. But if you're looking for deals and there are some manufacturers and sellers out there who want to get rid of old stock and then they sell it off cheap, especially during holiday season, you might get a really good deal on the 14th gen platform. So you do have upgrades to 14 700K and then 900K. So there is upgrade available there as well, but this guy you can cool with a potato. It's very efficient and then really good, especially for video editing. So if you're looking for a budget build around a thousand dollars, something like that for creative applications, photo video editing, it's a fantastic CPU. Even for 3D, the multi-core performance is not so bad and it hardly pulls any power at all. Interestingly, the 14th gen is not particularly slower than the Core Ultra newest series. The Core Ultra newest series has some other features, but in terms of the maximum performance, there is really no difference. And at that price point was the Ultra 5, which is equivalent to the i5 now, is the 245K, that one, is a lot more expensive than the 14600K, yet the 14600K just offers so much value at the budget end in there. Very much highly recommended. And you might be saying, what about the Ryzen 7600X or 9600X? Actually, the 14600K outperforms them in most of the cases, apart from Photoshop. That's where Ryzen is a little bit better. But I think for the value, the 14600K is unbeatable. And if you wanna get that, the link is in the description below. And finally, I wanna also add another extra bonus CPU in here. And this bonus one is for people who um, have some cash. And what I'm talking about is the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 9970X. So this is the latest Threadripper platform with 32 cores. It is absolutely amazing. Now, it is a whole other world and this is like the pro workstation. It is multiple times more expensive than the rest of the CPUs. And in some cases you can pill the whole PC for the same price, but at the same time, it's a whole other level. If you're doing anything multi-core heavy, even for video editing actually. So if you're using Nvidia 5000 series GPUs with the Threadripper, you're gonna get incredible video editing performance, but not just that, but also 3D. In terms of 3D, in my benchmarks, it's very, very linear and double the performance from the 9950X, which is absolutely insane. So you get even more performance, but then the power efficiency is even better at this one. So if you're doing any 3D or you really wanna build like a big workstation, then this is the one. You've got so much options of PCI lanes, multiple GPU support, lots of storage support, extra PCI lanes, everything you want, this is the one and it's gonna run really, really nice and cool. You can use air cooling or water cooling with it. If you want bulletproof, then go air cooling, obviously, but it's a fantastic platform. So if you're looking at platform difference, look at this, Z890 versus X870E. In terms of motherboard features, there is really no difference. In fact, I would say that this Z890 has even better platform support because it's got Thunderbolt 5 USB-C, whereas the X870E has only USB 4. If you're looking at the price point, look at that, $507, whereas this is $490, so it is cheaper. And if you're looking at the Z790 motherboards there, you can see that they're going really expensive, and that's why you might not find a deal, but you can in some of the points. Let's have a look here, Z790, use 664. That is is not a good deal because the new platform is like $200 cheaper and you get better performance, better specs, everything out of that one. So that's interesting, but that's not just a pro art. If you're looking at any of the same ones, this is a 
gigabyte Z890 Aorus Master and then X870E Aorus Master. You can see $400 and then the Intel one is actually cheaper, about $13 cheaper. So all of these little things will add up if you're thinking about going Intel or AMD. And that's why I've mentioned that Intel is the underdog here. And as a creator, there are some real benefits for going with Intel's platform. But if upgradability is one of those, then probably stick with AMD Ryzen. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you in the comment section below. Which video should we do next? Top five GPUs, motherboards, laptops? Let me know.